Close your eyes and picture being retired. What are you doing? How do you feel? I feel like there's two options. Either you're relaxing, traveling, doing your favorite hobby and feeling peaceful and amazing, or you have no clue what to picture at all because just hearing the word retirement makes you feel a little sick to your stomach. If you're on the second side of things, you're not alone. There was a survey done recently by CPP Investments and Innovative Research Group that showed that most people don't know how much money they'll need to retire, they don't have a financial plan for retirement, and some people don't even know if they'll ever be in a position to plan for it. Also, for anyone who's listening to this thinking, ooh, I don't know, making a retirement plan sounds kind of stressful, I promise you it's a lot more stressful not having a plan. Actually, I have a quick quiz for you to see how you compare to Canadians overall. All yes or no questions. So question number one, do you know how much money you need to retire? 53% of people surveyed said that they don't. Number two, do you set aside money from every paycheck for retirement? 75% of people surveyed don't. Number three, are you afraid of running out of money in retirement? 62% of people surveyed said they are. And number four, are you stressed about money daily? 31% of people surveyed said they are, and that number goes up to 42% for people between the ages of 18 and 44 years old. Now I know you're on board with wanting to build a retirement plan and cut your stress levels down, but how do you make a retirement plan? The first step is to figure out how much money you'll need to save for retirement, which includes figuring out how much money you currently spend and on what. Now, if you already have a budget that you use every month or you track your spending, then it's a bit more straightforward and you can get a more accurate number. If not, then you have a few options. You can either start by budgeting and figure out your monthly expenses, or another trick that we learned is that you can take your monthly income and deduct any expenses that you don't think you'll pay for in retirement from that. A quick and simple example would be if you made $3,500 a month and let's say you spent that entire amount every single month, but you drive one and a half hours to work and you wouldn't have to spend as much on gas and parking once you were retired. You can actually remove that expense from the $3,500. Once you deduct everything, then the number you're left with would be your estimated monthly spend in retirement. And keep in mind that the goal isn't to bring this number down to as low as possible because you want it to be accurate. Once you know roughly how much you'll be spending in retirement, you need to figure out how long you'll be retired for. Now, this is another tough question because it depends on when you can retire. If you're on the younger side, you have the flexibility to play around with how much you currently save, how much that money will grow over time, and then also how much you expect to spend in retirement to find an age that could work for you. If you're closer to retirement, then we suggest looking into how much you've already saved up compared with how much you expect to spend in retirement, and then how long it'll take you to bridge that gap. So now that you know how much money you'll be spending in retirement and your ideal retirement age, now you can estimate how much money you'll need to save for retirement. Now in Canada, the official retirement age is currently 65 years old, and you can either go with that number or you can go lower if you want to. Now we can put the math together. If I'm spending $3,500 a month or $42,000 a year in retirement, and I'll be retired for 25 years, then I'll need at least $1.05 million. Now, if that number sounds insanely high to you as in how am I ever gonna save a million dollars, there's a few things to remember. First, ideally you're investing your money and not just saving it. Investing your money allows it to grow at a much higher rate for those retirement years. On top of investing your money so that it grows over time, there are programs like the Canada Pension Plan, also called the CPP, that serve as a base for retirement. The idea behind the CPP is to cover a portion, specifically about 25% of your retirement income, up to a specific limit. Now, that number actually can be bumped up as of 2019 to one third, depending on how much and for how long you've contributed to the enhanced CPP. There's also other government programs like Old Age Security or OAS, which at a high level is an amount that's distributed to anyone over over age 65 in Canada who's lived here for a minimum of 10 years. But if you make a lot of money, this could be reduced. So to sum that up, your retirement income will be a mix of what you save yourself, any employer provided pension that you might have, and what these government programs will supplement. So it's important to make sure that you have a plan. Now the big question you're left with is how do you go about saving and investing for your retirement? How do you hit that $1.05 million number or whatever it is for you? In general, you wanna start as early as you can and you wanna contribute as much as you can. The good news is you might already be doing this because most employed Canadians 18 and older outside of Quebec contribute a portion of their income to the CPP. The idea is that you pay into the pension fund throughout all of your working years and then when you retire, you receive a benefit payment which serves as income for your retirement. Now the contributions that are added to the CPP fund don't just sit there. There's an independent professional investment organization called CPP Investments that manages the CPP fund and works hard to help it grow so that millions of Canadians can all retire and benefit from the fund. CPP Investments helps to ensure that the CPP fund is strong and will be there over the long term by investing CPP contributions so that the overall pot grows. And over the past 20 years, CPP Investments has grown the CPP fund to over $575 billion. Okay, so on
On top of the CPP, Canadians also need to save a lot themselves for retirement because it's only a portion of your retirement income. A few things to look into to help you do that are the registered retirement accounts that we have here in Canada. The main ones are the TFSA and RRSP. They both have tax advantages that can help you as you save for retirement. We have videos on both that can help you decide which one to use first based on your situation and your age. Once you've decided how much money you'll be investing, what you're investing in, and what accounts you'll be using, then it's about being consistent over time. Make sure you revisit your retirement plan every year to see how you're tracking against your goals and if everything still makes sense. Once you're approaching retirement, there's a lot more to consider, but having your retirement plan in place is a really good and important first step. And we hope that we can help increase the number of Canadians with retirement plans. Anyways, thank you to CPP Investments for working with us on this video and helping ensure that Canadians better understand how they'll benefit from the Canada Pension Plan once they retire. Our contributions are one piece of it, but the investments made are what keep the fund sustainable. If you wanna hear more about how CPP Investments works and see the rest of the retirement survey results, then check out the link in the description box below or the link up here or somewhere on the screen.